find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. This is episode 113, and we're going to have a really great one here for you. Once again, again, I am a video producer here in the Pittsburgh area with the International Wrestling Cartel, a lot of documentaries and other promotions, a lot of stuff going on, and with me is my compatriot, the other side of the coin from San Antonio, Texas. He is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, and I hope he's found a place to crash in Dallas. If not, I'm going to keep plugging for you guys to find, let him sleep on your couch so he can go experience the WrestleMania weekend. And, and, uh, my name's Ian Payton. Hi. Oh, didn't <laughs> you I get that? Name. You just said all the other stuff. But, hey, uh, hi, so I come I'm happy to be back. We're doing great. We're doing great. It's the last podcast of the night, and everybody's completely awake. Especially Eamon. <laughs> uh, but we got a great one here. Uh, Matt Carlin is going to be joining us later in the show. Of course, the guy that writes around the indies over at IndieWrestling.us. We're going to talk about WrestleMania weekend and all the stuff that's not WrestleMania that's going to be happening down in Dallas that you guys should be paying attention to. Uh, but first, we're going to get to our guest in a moment. But check out the show and everything else going on at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. This show and so many others. iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, YouTube, Facebook. Subscribe, watch, listen to the show, however it's convenient for you. And please share it with your friends as well. Or drop us a line if you have questions, if we've announced the guest coming up, or any suggestions for people we should be talking to on the show, or any promotions we haven't been covering on the show that you're really digging out there. 412-206-WMS0 or the email address goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com uh, Really excited to talk to our guest this week. He debuted just a, the, geez, just a matter maybe about a month ago in the International Wrestling Cartel, but that's not all that he's into. He's Shane in your face uh, here and in the studio right here with us tonight. How you doing, man? I'm doing real good, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm glad you glad, glad you got to uh, uh, get in here and and find the house <laughs> a little yeah. bit. Had a little bit issue, but uh, um, it'll be so nice when we actually have a storefront to do this kind of stuff. But anyways, uh, so I we want to get into it. Not only you're a pro wrestler, you know, you're in MMA, you're into uh, uh, boxing as well. I want to get into all that stuff, but we like to kind of get to know who we're talking to here before we do get to that. How did you first get introduced to pro wrestling? What's your earliest memory of of getting into professional wrestling? Uh, actually, getting into professional wrestling or watching? Watching. Just it, uh, it, 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 it you caught know, your attention. Back Way back when, you know, uh, me and my dad used to sit at home, watch it together every night, have popcorn, you know. Nice. It, was, it was a nice little weekly thing, you know, we did every, you know, we just got to spend some time together. You know, he worked early in the day, I went to school, you know, so... Just kind of bonded over it, and it's stuck with me ever since. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so, and again, I, you, I, I've heard a little bit of story from. I, I had the fortune to have coffee with a friend of yours uh, yes. recently, and hear a little bit of your story. So, I, I want to get into that. So, so initially, you're an MMA guy, correct? So, so tell me a little bit about getting into MMA. I don't think we we probably haven't had anybody that's had a lot of MMA experience on this show and so I might not be familiar with a lot of our listeners. Um, how did you come across that? Uh, actually, it's it's a, not too too much of a long story, but a guy in high school I used to wrestle with on high school wrestling team invited me up to the gym one day. He said, hey, I got this thing. You want to try it out? Mm-hmm. At the time, MMA was still just, you know, just getting rebranded. You know, UFC was uh, starting to gain a whole new following, something I was interested in. Gave it a try. Two months later, I was two and zero. Oh. Uh, so I stuck with it. It's been about a decade now. Mm-hmm. And, and how did that transfer over to deciding to want to get into into pro wrestling? Ah, uh, man, some pro wrestling, something I always wanted to do. It's something I loved, you know. And I still continue to watch it actively. Uh, MMA, it's it's more of it's more grueling, I guess mm-hmm. you could say. You know, the grind, the hours. I kind of got burnt out for a little while, took a couple years off. Uh, then that's whenever I linked up with Plummer and Labar, mm-hmm. who led me to the IWC uh, Wrestling Academy. Got up in there, started training, and a month ago had my debut. Awesome. So, so, so tell me a little bit about, you know, of course, it's a, it's a bit of a grind. You're, you're <clears> training <throat> for a different thing. 
yes. when you're talking about MMA. Completely different beast. Mm-hmm. 100% is there's no chance. Uh, take it slow. Always on the go. Always on the grind. Multiple gyms. Multiple coaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, very little sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, and on top of that, you're trying to tackle a full time, forty plus hour a week job. Right. So, in order to make things happen, you know, some sacrifices are made. Over ten years, plenty have been made. How does that compare? You know, of course, you're you're just starting your pro wrestling journey, more or less. Um, having just actually had your first debut matches, of course, training you know well over a year before that, probably. Right. Um, and 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 I mean, you're really. What is the independent or startup or whatever you call it in MMA? Um, what does that look like? Because again, we've heard stories of people come out through the indies, trying to make it, trying to get to that point. You know, for you know, 112 episodes, pretty much on here. Um, how does how does that road look before you're even looking at pro wrestling? Oh, man, it was, uh, again, it was a long, grueling road. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's where I used to fight at 155 pounds. Mm -hmm. Uh, The weight cut was excruciating. I'd do it three to four times a year. Uh, Did that for about four years straight. Uh, The the interviews that I went through, the processes I've gone through, Mm -hmm. everything, it was, it's literally, it's, Almost essentially, it's groomed me for professional wrestling. Uh, it's made me a better athlete all around. Which, at this point, you know, I've actually developed my character in the pro wrestling circuit around my real life uh, accomplishments. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you know, I grew up wrestler. Always, always wanted to wrestle. Middle school didn't have a wrestling team. High school finally had a wrestling team. I jumped on it. You know, and it wasn't obviously the same. But it took me into the MMA direction, which a lot of amateur wrestling experience does tend to go, you know, to the MMA route. It's a lot easier, simpler, easier transition. Uh, but I just never let the dream die for pro wrestling, and so I just got into that. Wanted to, <coughs> excuse me. So, but it was it was long. It was hard. Uh, you know, a lot of hours that I really, mm-hmm. really devoted to myself uh, mentally, physically. The, I mean, just just the amount of hard work, the dedication that it takes. Everyone sees all the fame and, and the fancy lights, but no one sees the time and dedication that, you know, people actually put in. It's hard, mm-hmm. you know, and only a few, hand, hand few or a handful, you know, a few select few actually make it to the big times just like pro wrestling. Right, and, and, and even more because you're really kind of putting your – even more so, probably your body on the line in, in MMA. So, what does like a, uh, I guess what I'm, I'm looking for is like, what does the lower level kind of MMA show look like? Because you know, compared to like an indie wrestling show, uh, it's a lot larger, mm-hmm. uh, especially depending on the guys you have. Yeah, uh, indie wrestling shows they're a lot smaller, a lot more intimate, as are the MMA shows. Mm-hmm. But with MMA, uh, there's not that fan interaction that you get with pro wrestling. So you come out, you're in just you're in a little back cubby hole, just like the pro wrestling world. Sometimes you're in a gym. Sometimes you might actually get you know a decent venue. Uh, and it's the same setup. It's very not very different mm-hmm. as far as uh, like actuality, like being like in space, like you're going. And next thing you know, you're there. Two hours later, you're in the ring. Five minutes later, you're out. You're in the back. You're sweaty, having a couple beers. And going to sheets afterwards. Just, <laughs> just the same, right? <laughs> I don't go to sheets. I don't do that. I eat pretty clean almost all the time. So it's good. Indulge in a few beers after, though. You know, mm-hmm. celebrate a victory. Awesome. So obviously, you know, I, I think you know we 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 talk a lot about like people come from. Uh, say football or, or anything like that in that transition. I mean, with just uh, uh, our buddy Matt here, and, and that's going to be talking with us later. We we just talked to Baron Corbin actually okay. a few weeks ago and talking about that tr- transition from that. Was there anything um, that surprised you in the training, um, at least on the physical side of things, going from MMA to the pro wrestling route? Uh, punching people. <laughs> as in uh, the don't do it as in yes don't do it uh i i've been known to hit people fairly hard yeah and to actually pull those punches it it was quite a challenge at first mm-hmm. uh 
It, it, it's, it's a switch because I, I know uh, my nephew is he's a high school wrestler just okay. gone into college and he's doing a little bit of MMA and I know for him I I, I think it's uh, the, not Taekwondo but I, I I can't remember right now but I know one big difference for him was turning that switch from amateur wrestling and and the giving up your back jujitsu right? ju- jujitsu that's jiu-jitsu, right yes and, and and it's just a different thing and even like the grabbing the gi so he does does not yeah. gi um, so I, I can. I, I know that that's a transition he's going through. So it sounds like a uh, similar-ish transition you got to go through just for just for the, the interactions, right? Essentially, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you know, you don't, you don't want to hurt your counterpart yeah. you know, in the ring. Uh, in the cage, that's exactly what you're trained to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've done that many of times, you know, mostly to success, especially mm-hmm. in my pro career. Uh, but now, switching up. It's a little different, you know. The slams are different. Uh, you got to protect yourself, obviously, at all times in both sports. But the tra- the big transition is just actually, you know, being in there pacing yourself, because my fight pace is basically unmatched, unparalleled. No one really keeps up with me, so actually have to maintain that for, you know, transition into the wrestling world. Mm-hmm. It's kind of hard, you know, slow the feet down. Right, exactly. Um, and and it's like you've had a few uh, uh, matches <laughs> under your belt here, um, and you really, we'll see a, a, a coming up here in upcoming epi- uh, up shows for uh, IWC. Right. Um, what was it like to get out there for your first match, which I believe was that one at Proving Ground against uh, Dylan Correct. Bostic, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, I had a great opponent. Mm-hmm. You know, the crowd, it was exhilarating walking through those curtains. My music dropped. Same music I use for MMA, nice. you know? Nice, nice. Didn't change too much up. Same gear, shin guards, wrap the hands up, you know, got to protect the tools. Mm-hmm. And went out there. I mean, and it was electrifying. Mm-hmm. You know, not to steal anything from The Rock, but <laughs> it was one of a kind. Like, I mean, I wouldn't have traded it for the world. It was, you know, childhood dream come true. It's awesome. That's awesome. You probably didn't have to get bandaged up as much afterwards, huh? I didn't, <laughs> but I did take a chair shot, and that's not allowed in MMA. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so, and I also saw, because, again, this is kind of like the, okay, we, we got it. This is the last try. I got to get him on because he's also doing this. I see you're going to be taking your uh, making your professional boxing debut as well, but you've been doing many years as an amateur in that as well, right? Uh over the years of mixed martial arts, boxing was my primary style of training. Okay. I had one amateur match. Mm-hmm. I won. The guy was about seven feet tall. And so it was it was like the old classic game, you know, Mighty Mac was I was fighting that guy, I was punching, I was punching. But still trained, trained boxing. I trained my kickboxing. Mm-hmm. Uh and I'm a I'm a predominantly a striker in MMA, which makes me a good fit for the boxing world. So making this debut you know, only a month after making my wrestling debut, you know, I'm trying to capitalize on all markets here. And that, that, that's been the interesting thing, too, because I know, you know, it, it, you were one of the names and I'm always curious to see who comes up at Proving Ground because, I, you know, again, it's kind of, that's the show where it's like, OK, who's going to be the next, you know, so and so who's going to be the next guy that's going to pop? You know, right. uh, Britt Baker, I obviously has made a splash in her year since last July debuting yes. uh, guys like Darren De Niro. They're, they're doing tremendous stuff right now. And um, and and and. and you know, we, we, I'm looking. I'm looking at the car, and I see Shane in your face. What, what is this stuff? Uh, <laughs> so much. We were joking on the way to see if we could talk to the announcer to think you were Japanese and say "inyafase" <laughs> or you know, as you come out. Right. Where did that come from? And, and I understand this is like kind of your branding going over to MMA as well, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, well, basically, what I did, I cut off the last name. Mm-hmm. It's too much to handle, especially for the casual fan. It's bullish. Too many consonants, not enough vowels. So, you know, just cut it down, Shane in your face. It's my fight style. It's my brand. It's how I live life. Everything's always full throttle. You know, I don't, I don't take anything for granted, but at the same time, I worked for everything that I have. So just it's something that my original trainer gave me the name. Uh, I hated it at first. <laughs> hated it. I was like, this is a terrible name. I need something that rhymes, something that sounds catchy, but after sticking with it, you know, it, it really has become me. Mm-hmm. So I, now that's, it is me, I live it, and, you know, it's it's carrying over. You know, three different uh, 
three different sports now, you know? Mm-hmm. Awesome. And, and again, like, like you mentioned, you really had a presence of, of fans. Um, uh, it's it's not often that you see a debut match with somebody and and there's much more than their mom holding up a sign. Right. <laughs> you definitely had a bit of a section. You, you, you had it going on. Like, were these like were these MMA fans or friends or? or uh, it was everything. Mom was everything. there. She had the of sign. Of course mom's there. The, the little wrestler figure was up on the sign, you know. Nice. She pretended it was me. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. You know, she's probably my hey, biggest hey, supporter. Hey, Jimmy Nutt's mom still comes with the sign. So I just want to point that out. Right. And my mom, she'll be exactly there. You know, same exact way every single time. She's always there. She's always trying to sit ringside. Awesome. She just got her tickets for my boxing match. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, she's been there. You know, through and through, has always supported me. You know, I always have the crazy haircuts. You know, there you go. So back in the day, mom used to cut them. Mm-hmm. And you know, a big supporter. But most of the fans, uh, they've they've traveled along. You know, along the road, and they're just there to support me now uh, through any endeavor that I that I partake. Uh, a lot of friends, a lot of uh, new friends, you know, just meeting people, you know, because I'm a salesman. I, I go meet the people. If you want to attend my show, you're going to get a ticket from me personally. Mm-hmm. You know, so I go door to door, uh, meeting and greeting, you know, selling T-shirts, selling tickets, nonstop grind. In the gym, every time I have a free minute, I'm on the phone, I'm driving, going to meet somebody for something. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so, uh, Eamon, I, Eamon, I don't think you've de- dealt with an MMA guy uh, 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 in your side of things. I, I was wondering if you had any questions here uh, for Shane. Well, I, I kind of wanted to get your thoughts on the um, – I think a lot of people uh, tend to talk about how MMA – you know, is, is MMA overtaking pro wrestling? You know, and, and the aspects of that have also how, like, MMA and pro wrestling t- tend to, I feel now, kind of take from each other too in certain aspects. Um, do you see there being, I guess, more of a blend of like stuff you see from MMA in pro wrestling? You hope, I guess, that that's what happens with the business going forward. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's always really good whenever you know someone cross promotes themselves. I mean, just look at the antics. You know, as bad of a reference it is, but the Tough Enough show. Mm. You know, those guys are characters on there. So you're telling us we can't do pro wrestling too? You know. Yeah, everyone. I mean, the green hair, the blue hair, the crazy designs, uh, the the custom trunks, the bright colors, you know. And at the end of the day, you're still going out to do a job, and that's perform for the fans. Definitely. Awesome. So, uh, what are you watching these days? What, what are you What are you keeping up with? Uh, or, or you know, indies, uh, the main stuff. Uh, what, what's kind of catching your eye, or uh, you're taking any influence from? I mean, there's there's a lot I take influence from. Uh, it's pretty much everywhere. It's it's nothing in specific, but you know I do watch the main stuff. WWE uh, definitely like to catch Ring of Honor. Watching the UFC, you know I try to attend as many local shows as I can, uh, barring my work schedule. Mm-hmm. You know, just I try to network with people online in person, and just pick people's brains. You know, I'm a rookie in the business now. You know, it, it's new. It's it's brand new. It's weird starting over. Uh, but I think everything that I've accomplished in MMA has helped me get to where I am right now and it's given me the sex <clears throat> the success that I'm having with the with the MMA world and pro wrestling, which is allowing me now to transition into boxing. It's awesome. That's awesome. Um and one question we like to end on here, you know, again, you know, Kind of uh, you know early in the game, but so far, what do you think is the wor- the best thing and the worst thing about uh, being in indie wrestling so far? Uh, worst thing, ring crew, <laughs> chair shots. <laughs> they don't like they, they don't you you don't you don't have to set up the the cage in MMA much, do you? You do not. You never. You get there, everything's <laughs> ready to go. The lights are up. Yeah. You give the guy your music, and you go back and warm up. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a much longer day mm-hmm. for pro wrestling. You know, it's part of paying the dues though. You know, one day, you know, hopefully, you know, I'll be afforded the luxury to not have to. But at the same time, I enjoy it. You know, it gets it allows me to bond with all the other workers. Uh, <clears throat> but you know, the best part of wrestling obviously is the crowd interaction. It's something that you don't really gain in MMA. 
you know, I always have a lot of fans in there. Uh, they're always cheering. They're loud. But I'm more in the zone for that. I'm more inclined not to even acknowledge them. You know, and obviously in the wrestling world, that's the main thing you want to do is acknowledge the fans. So, that's just, and that's what really won me over during my debut was actually watching the fans, hearing the fans, got the match, uh, got to watch it back, see how they interacted along with me and my opponents. <coughs> Awesome. And of course, uh, uh, coming up here, uh, International Wrestling Cartel, uh, big shows coming up. I don't know if you've been announced for Meadville. I was just trying to double check that real quick. Yes, I uh, You are there. Uh-huh. And uh, what, what are you going to be doing at Meadville? Big Night of the Superstars, of course, Booker T., uh, Shelton Benjamin, tons of stars, uh, uh, Jake the Snake, Scott Hall. Right. Uh, big part of this show we're going to be going names. to up here in uh, less than two weeks here. Uh, the Sorotron Media production crew is going to be up there hanging out too and doing our thing and, and, and getting it on DVD, digital download. Um, uh, you, you know this 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 is the biggest show Correct. of the year, of the year uh, as far yeah. as as far as star power uh, by by any means. Um, what are you looking forward to uh, uh, going to that show? Oh, I'm definitely looking forward. Plumber, you're probably listening, so I'm still making a push to get on that card. I know I'm a rookie, uh, but I also packed the house. I can add to the star power. Uh, but I was just announced for Clearfield. It is cage combat, so. I mean, it's only fitting that I get in a cage. You know, cross-reference both. Best of go. both worlds. Why not? You know, I'll get in there. I mean, last time I got choked out with a chain by John Bolin. Wasn't exactly too fun. You know, fortunately he got Vegas, you mm-hmm. know, who's a good friend of mine who come out uh, to save me the last time. So I don't know who they got on deck for me, but you better be ready. Uh, kind of backtracking this a little bit, but but are you are you influenced at all by like I don't know why it just just popped in my head, but I remember <laughs> the old Lions Den match with Ken Shamrock and yes. uh, <laughs> back yes. in the day, like that was that was the first real kind of MMA crossover right. thing that happened, right? He actually was a was a large inspiration to me, mm-hmm. uh, not necessarily in a pro wrestling world, but in the MMA world. Uh, mm-hmm. I read his documentaries, his his training logs, everything, uh, his his beginning matches, you know, and I mean, he was always such a physical presence, had that aggression and it was just someone to look up to, you know, he, why would you not multiple time champion, two different sports, you know, you can't get much better than that. It's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, anything you're looking what, what, what's your, uh, uh, big kind of goal right now in pro wrestling before we let you go? Oh man, the big goal. I just want to get off the, you know, the, the mid cards, start start main eventing, get back to how I was in MMA. You know, I'm used to being the main event. Uh, so basically, I, you know, I just want to keep growing, keep learning. I mean, yeah, I've trained. I technically, I'm done with training, but you're never done with training. You always got to learn, and that's how you get better. I just want to be prosperous, you know, start getting on bigger shows, get my name out there. You know, the fans coming back to see me. Just grow a natural fan base, you know, and with the cross reference through MMA, those guys are now coming over to watch me and support me through the wrestling aspect. Uh, going in and boxing this week, you know, I'm likely to pick up a few fans as well. Nice, nice. Where can people find you online so they can follow what you're doing? Uh, all social medias, it's at Shane in your face, um, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Shane in your face. Basically, just you know, follow along. I'm always posting something funny, some healthy food, uh, shirtless selfies for you ladies out there. Uh, you know, I just try to I try to keep a wide range. You know, get a good whole full audience. You know, not actually cater to one person. You know, I like to I like to make myself known. I'm a real person. Mm-hmm. You know, there's what you get what is what you see. So, you know, but yeah, like everything going on. You know, I still make time, you know, interact with all the fans on social media. Awesome. And, of course, the first couple matches available right now, IWCWrestling.com, uh, IndieWrestling.us. And you can check those out and see see in person uh, for yourself what's what's going on with him in the pro wrestling world. And, of course, with IWC here in the coming months as well. I'm sure you're going to be making a big impact here uh, as we go on. So thank you so much, Shane, uh, joining us here on the show. Just one last thing. Uh, this weekend, the fights, uh, Pinnacle. Sure. Butler Street, the Teamsters Hall, bell time 7 p.m. I got a really game opponent. If you guys want tickets, social media, reach out to me. I'll come meet you.
There you go. There you go for guys here in the Pittsburgh area. And, and again, you know, if uh, if you're into it, look for MMA, look for boxing in, in whatever your local area. Just just like we talk about indie wrestling, support your local indie wrestling. If you're not in the Pittsburgh area, you can find it. There's this stuff happening all the time. I know MMA sounds like it's 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 pretty big in the area here. There's Fight Club. There's all kinds of stuff going on in the Pittsburgh area. Correct. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. And we're going to take a look back some more of the 10 years of Wrestling Mayhem show from Looking for Group this past uh, this, this past January, actually. And, uh, and and a little bit of a, a great show also happening here in Pittsburgh. A great comedy show at Dave & Buster's down in the waterfront um, for a great, great cause. And we'll be right back with some more indie wrestling discussion on uh, WrestleMania weekend as well with uh, Matt Carlin's. Hey guys, it's Matt Light, Pittsburgh Magazine's 2014 and 2015 winner, best comedian, and cancer survivor. Come check me out Friday, April 8th, for a night of stories, laughter, barjitsu beer pong, and prizes that will be sure to make this a night to remember. I'll be performing with some of the best comedians in the Steel City. Portions of the proceeds benefit the Testicular Cancer Awareness Foundation. Special thank you to our event partners, FN Vodka, Ultra Premium Vodka, Pittsburgh Improv, Pittsburgh's premier comedy club, Sorgatron Media, podcast, video production, and creative media, Pittsburgh Podcast Network, for Pittsburgh by Pittsburgh, River's Edge Radio Network, Pittsburgh's voice for local music. Comedians for Cancer, Friday, April 8th at Dave & Buster's in the Waterfront, the only place to eat, drink, play, watch sports, and laugh all under one roof. Get those tickets, folks. Go to barjitsu.com or showclicks.com and search Comedians for Cancer. Uh, my origin story is uh, Sorg and I used to get drunk at parties and we would talk about wrestling and then we decided to do it in a way that people could hear it. And uh, we started with very few people and now we have many, many people who hear it. And then we've been talking to each other about wrestling for 10 years, which is a long time to do anything, anything. And those people are also part of the conversation. They also talk to us about professional wrestling uh, every week. And sometimes they do it without us even there. They've taken the initiative to talk about professional wrestling without our involvement. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible. And we're back. Check out all that awesome stuff uh, going on here uh, in the Pittsburgh area, Indie Wrestling US, and of course, all the rest of the videos from the 10 year um, are over on the YouTube or the Facebook page. Go check them out. A lot of great stories there from uh, our, our time over the years. Uh, so, Shane, in your face, still with us in the studio, hanging out, going to talk some wrestling with us. And of course, Eamon in San Antonio, Texas, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, I, I got your name this time. I remember your name this time. <laughs> um, and only my co host for 112 other episodes. Um, and uh, also with us, the man that writes that are fantastic multimedia extravaganza that is um, around the indies at IndieWrestling.us. It's mainstream Matt on the Twitter, Matt Carlins. What's up, Sorg? Hey. Aim. So this Mr. is. Mr. In Your Face. What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> um so 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 we wanted to talk a little bit of course it's wrestlemania weekend and we talked so much about wrestlemania and maybe had a little fun with it with somebody who hasn't watched wrestling in a couple months um <laughs> over on wrestling mayhem show please go check out the latest episode of that uh for that comparison uh, but there's far <laughs> far more if you've ever been to wrestlemania you know there's more than even the nxt and the hall of fame and the access there's wrestle cons there's ring of honors everybody seems to latch on possible to a wrestling show i know when i went to new york there i couldn't even imagine half of these promotions there were there were somewhere in the greater new york and new jersey area uh that was it was just unbelievable just looking at that list and you guys want to break down a little bit of like what should you be looking for this weekend right matt uh yeah and i tell you what's really interesting about this year is that just the quality of the shows um and maybe up in new york they had a lot more quantity and maybe up in us uh, when they did it up in uh, California last year, maybe they had more quantity out there too. But it is if if you look at the shows that are running in that pocket of downtown Dallas, it is the elite of the elite as far as you know the kind of shows that wrestling fans, hardcore fans, are dying to see. So you've got Ring of Honor, and you've got obviously you've got NXT, and you've got Evolve, and they are all. It's all going down within blocks of one another. It's really crazy. Mm -hmm. um, 
Eamon, I know you're a lot closer to that than me. Um, but I actually, because I'm a nerd, I guess, um, I mapped out these venues that are doing these shows. Yeah, and, and, and it's I, crazy. I, I did as well, and I noticed are. that, like, um, I think the place where all like, the WWN live shows are running is like maybe like two, three minutes from where NXT takeover is happening. Oh, it's it's in the shadow of the uh, convention center in downtown Dallas. There's this little joint called Eddie Dean's Ranch. <laughs> and it's some sort of restaurant slash banquet hall slash tourist trap. You go inside and it looks like the country bear jamboree inside. They've got everything. It looks like it's set up like the Wild West inside this place. I'm not joking, Joel. You go find uh, eddiedeansranch.com and you check out some pictures. Um, and this is where the, the WWN crew are going to be running Evolve and uh, CZW and Kaiju Big Battle. <laughs> yes, oh which if you're going, please go. If you've never experienced, go to Kaiju Big Battle. You will be confused, but then you'll just Love it. And it's really hard to know where to begin. It's There's a huge quantity of shows. If you wanted to see like the 10 best matches of the weekend, you probably would fail because they're probably going to overlap here and there. Um, I don't even understand how some guys are making as many matches as they are. Sammy Callahan is doing something absurd. He's going to have like, six matches during the weekend, something ridiculous. I, I found that really interesting when I went up to Mania in New Orleans uh, a couple years ago because uh, I went to a couple different – and I kind of spanned out the shows I was going to. I did a little bit of Ring of Honor, a little – I think I went to the Shimmer show that was under the WWN uh, banner, and I went to WrestleCon. And it was amazing to see how many people I saw at different companies in different venues, like sometimes even on the same day. Like, literally, I just saw you wrestle, and then we went to another event. Oh, and I get to see you wrestle again. Like, stuff like that I think is very interesting. Um, and we're talking about situations where guys are going to have to – where whoever's promoting the show is going to have to work this out for the guys where it's like, okay, you're going to be in the opening match so that you can get in your car and zip across town so you can pick this other show and be in the main event later on. I want to point out that's not entirely um, um, unforeseen. Because I know there's been I, I we even locally I mean even well, well Gory was on the first match of IWC 15 right and mm-hmm. he was in what the main event at VO or he was on the card at VOW I think yeah so yeah, right. I mean th- this this happens and I've seen even like somebody that was like supposed to be on the card in Erie and supposed to be on the card the same night in Pittsburgh which is like two hours away so yeah like this this is not you know I I, I think this is regular business and especially a big weekend like this. They will do the logistics for it, right? Especially yeah, yeah, yeah. for some to get a Sammy Callahan on the card, right? I, I also find it very interesting because I feel it was like a few years ago that uh, people were kind of bringing up the the notion or rumors were kind of going around that WWE was going to crack down more on <laughs> on the indie wrestling promotions that were going to be you know running WrestleMania weekend, and that we weren't going to get to see them as much. Um, and I find it interesting that we that's not the case. Uh, and especially now what we know about, you know, WWE's relationship with companies like Evolve, like I find that extremely interesting. Like the fact that, you know, I would assume they're pretty welcomed into whatever city they're coming into for WrestleMania weekend. I think it's uh, interesting, too. It, it feels like WrestleMania is being challenged as far as match quality goes. Yeah. More, more deliberately being challenged for like the best match of the weekend than it's ever been challenged before. It's just the odds are not in WrestleMania's favor. It's, <laughs> it's more likely that the best match of the weekend is going to come out of the Evolve show or the NXT <laughs> show or the or Ring of Honor. Welcome, um, welcome to the pro poor wrestling. Wrestlemania, poor WrestleMania doesn't have a chance, Sorg. What are these guys going to do? Well, <laughs> welcome to the pro wrestling Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I don't know where to be. Do, do you want to try to like break this down chronologically? Like, does, Eamon, what do you think? <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I can tell you from what I have planned because I am planning. I, I could not make it to WrestleMania. I was not. I, I can't get a ticket to WrestleMania. I wanted to get a ticket to Takeover. And now the cheapest ticket's like two hundred fifty bucks. Jeez. Like as soon as they announced Nakamura, I'm like, wow, it's ridiculous. <laughs> um. Uh, but I felt I would be a real, it would be a real shame if I did and didn't at least attend some of these indie shows. So I wanted to make sure I was up there. 
Uh, I'm go- uh, from what I have planned, I will be at both Evolve events uh, and at the CZW event that's happening immediately following the first Evolve show. Um, so I, and that's a wide variety of wrestling. Mm-hmm. So um, I think it's very interesting, um, uh, particularly the Evolve card. Um, I, 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 I think their roster r- right now and the stuff they're presenting this weekend is going to be amazing, particularly with the international talents they have. Uh, particularly the international talents coming from the UK, like your Zack Sabre Juniors, your Will Ospreys, uh, your Tommy Ends, uh, guys like that I think are really going to uh, – it's, it's going to be cool to like, have those guys on that platform. You know, uh, Basically, they work, they work the UK or they work like Evolve or Reseda for PWG, and that's mm-hmm. about it. Like, I think it's going to be cool to get to see them in that environment. Um, uh, a lot of people are really touting their matches. I really think uh, uh, the Battle of the Flyers, I guess, is a good way to call it. The match between Will Ospreay and, and Ricochet on the second Evolve show looks to be phenomenal and show stealing, as every potential to be. Um, I, I think all up and down to that Evolve card, both Evolve cards are great, and, and, and even a lot of the WWE and live stuff. I think that's going to be a good place to kind of. If, if you're in, if you're very much just wanting to see top level independent wrestlers, I think that, that's kind of the way to go. Right, and I am noticing like like it's not like you're not going to be able to check out the WWE stuff, you know, against it. Like like I'm looking at the right. pay per view for Friday it starts at like 4 p.m. So you can completely watch that and kick over the takeover, so you can get the full experience. But even if you're just like, but hey, I'm not into WWE. Like there's a lot of people that are just like just. You know, I just like the indie stuff. I like the alternative stuff. I like the Lucha Underground stuff. They can have a very good weekend and spend a lot of money on iPay per views this weekend. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, which uh, which could be a boon for them. This has to be like this is like the Christmas. This is like the shopping season Christmas, I think, for pro wrestling in general, yeah. right? Like, th- th- I feel like they can make most of their awareness and money making uh, perhaps over, over this weekend. So, which I, I can see that, you know. And really, hasn't WrestleMania kind of become the like San Diego Comic Con of, of of pro wrestling? Like that, like that's the weekend. Like I know I felt that going up to twenty nine. I think you probably had the same thing, Eamon, at thirty, where they're like walking through that parking lot and you see all the people, all the cosplay, all the yeah. you know the tailgating, you know, like like that that feeling of we're all here. There are eighty thousand, you know, ninety thousand, hundred thousand, whatever the number was, you know of people in one place for this, you know, to see wrestling. Yeah. This, or something related to wrestling. Yeah. You know, like, like yeah. the Arnold classic, like you guys are all there with, for a common, no, a common interest, you know, uh, yeah, comic cons, you're all there because you're all into geeky shit, right? Yeah. And you're, you're, you're all into like, you know, the Arnold, you're all into, you're all fitness geeks getting together and having a good time. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Exactly. And, and this is just a bunch the the biggest compilation of wrestling geeks and transcending down on a town. And, right. and, 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 and it's great. Like with these companies should take it, take advantage of that. And uh, I, I can't say there's anything rest, WWE can really do to stop that because the venues want to make money. Right. Of course. So, yeah. It's all about the dollar, you know, at the end of the day. Right. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And Eamon, maybe you can speak to this as somebody who's and, and short you too, since you guys have actually been to WrestleMania and you've kind of seen the scene, but like, do you get the sense that like the, the, the more diehard WWE fans will will sample these smaller shows as they uh, see them around, or you think the WWE fans are there to do that, do access, whatever? Well, I Maybe do take over and then and then move on. Or do you think they're seeing like, well, this looks interesting? Um, this is a giant monster battle in the middle of a city. Maybe I want to do Japanese thing. I, I don't know if they're staying up till midnight to watch Kaiju, but yeah, yeah. Um, well, for me now, now my when I went, I think was that the first WrestleCon at twenty nine in New York. Um, so again, that's an event that was earmarked by like Hulk Hogan was there, I think. Like I'm pretty sure, like, and, and Warrior was there, and you know the, the guys that didn't have anything to do with WWE or maybe did Hacksaw, the Jake Roberts, Hacksaw Jim Duggan was the booth next to me, right? I and the, I believe I, um, that that was the year WrestleCon had those indie events right. like, linked up to it. They like were, you had Shimmer, you have Dragon Gate, you had all right. CZW, Chikara were running shows during WrestleCon, and WrestleCon's kind of vicinity. Right. Like I heard the entire weekend of shows basically from from my booth. 
um, yes. versus this splitting off. And even the show that we went to, Pro Wrestling uh, Syndicate, had Bret Hart and a bunch of names, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think, I think, you know, I, I don't know if they're all going to evolve, right? Because evolve is kind of the hardest of hardcore as far as indie wrestling fans, I feel. Maybe less, mm-hmm. maybe less so now that everybody's like on this NXT bandwagon. Maybe that kind of transcends it a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I think, I think the general fan is stretching out to this and be like, oh, okay, there's access, but there's, oh, hey, there's, I heard this show's happening in it, and I've heard of this guy, Johnny Gargano, because he was on NXT a couple times, because he's doing how yeah. many shows that weekend, right? Um, and I think it's, it's even, I think this is the most accessible all this stuff could have possibly been, again, and I'm not even just talking about Evolve, again, because of NXT. Like, people are looking for these alternatives. You know, we're having this thing where, us indie um, hipsters are coming in and meeting in the middle with the NXT people or, and being educated in that mix that we're all watching yeah. it on WWE Network, right? Why? I was going to say it's, it's less of it's growing and it's more blending. Right. It's it, more exactly. blending together. Exactly. And, and I think that is a boon for any of these companies that are going to be working this weekend um, that people will be looking for them more than maybe they ever did versus these guys probably had to do, do a lot of work at 29 30 31 to say hey there's some wrestling over here guys it's not just all about hulk hogan and john cena you know yeah versus you know something like this year so. I, I think that it's kind of like for for a certain segment of the wrestling fans that's that's part of the wrestlemania we can experience i mean i know oh, yeah. just casually talking about well maybe we'll go to orlando next year and you know the first thing i'm thinking is okay all right, I'll go, but we're going to be at shows on Friday and Saturday. You know, mm-hmm. we're going to do it right. We're going to get to some of these other shows because that becomes part of the experience of going to yeah, or, WrestleMania now. Or WrestleCon, you know. Uh, yeah. I, I go by Joe Dombrowski. He'll be there at WrestleCon, and he'll be all over the place too. So, hey, please, uh, Eamon, if you run into Joe Dombrowski, say hi. Um. <laughs> I, I ran into him at WrestleMania, uh, WrestleMania 31, basically. What's that? He was literally like on his way out of his booth as I was as I was coming in. There you and go. And I said hi. And he didn't even acknowledge you, did he? No, no, he did. He was very nice. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> that son of a bitch. Um, that's okay. You're allowed. You're allowed. It's Joe Nebraska. Right, right, Heavy. Right. You do have NXT and at least one match actually from WrestleMania. Two. Two matches. Or, excuse me, three. We're, we're going to go to 15 and we're going to get three WrestleMania matches oh, on this wow. thing. Oh, well, wow. Um, just to be nice. That's a testament. <laughs> that's a testament, especially since I see some NXT uh, 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 names popping up in here on Mania as well. So, I, I you know, that, that that's... It's, yeah. I, I, I Look, I get it. I mean, and, and 
I look, they don't come much more hardcore than Eamon and Garza. Uh, <laughs> and they, and they will tell me plainly, you know, and Garza most especially will tell me, you know, I don't care. Give two cents, you know, what you think about this WrestleMania card. Cause all the real matches are on these other smaller cards. But look, I, you know, for me, part of wrestling is spectacle and scope. Yeah. Um, and so I, how can you deny Undertaker versus Shane McMahon? I mean, to me, that's still an undeniable, you know, match that deserves to be on this list. But, you know, <laughs> at the same time, uh, you got to look at, like, you know, obviously you mentioned Ricochet and Osprey. Um, and Adam, Adam, Cole, Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly. No holds barred in, uh, in one of the Ring of Honor shows. Oh, that's going to be pretty rad. Oh, jeez. I, I think another one that sticks out for me is uh, from the Ring of Honor show, uh, The Young Bucks and the Most City Machine Guns, which I yeah. don't believe has happened since, like, maybe early 2011 in TNA. And, and the fact, you know, five or so years later, and I feel like in an environment like this where they're definitely going to go balls out, like, I think that will be very interesting to see. Um yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of great stuff. Yeah, I mean, every time the Bucks have a match, it's an event basically. At this point, <laughs> there's a really cool there's a really cool match at the uh, and we should mention the Super Show at WrestleCon. Uh, and there's going to be a match. This is perfect for all you Lucha Underground fans. Aerostar and Phoenix and Andrew Everett versus Drago and Firestorm and Jack Evans. I'm not familiar with a lot with Firestorm. I, 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 I will say, I, I'm upset that Drago and Jack Evans are on the same team because we're clearly not going by Lucha Underground uh, <laughs> storytelling. But no. so that's going to be great. So, so you're saying obviously. this match is not canon. So this match apparently no, is not canon. Not, no. <laughs> this is not Dragon Slayer Jack Evans. Um, but no, I, I, I'm, I mean, obviously those guys are amazing. So, um, uh, And I feel like the WrestleCon show I think is always interesting because it's a – the WrestleCon show is the ultimate mix. Mm-hmm. I feel. I feel like that question you asked about if the casual fans are going to be attending this. The WrestleCon show, I think, is the closest because you have matches like that, but you also have like Matt Hardy versus Lance Storm. I, I think is one of the matches on the card. Oh yeah, it's it seems to be the sampler platter of of indie wrestling. Yeah, I remember going to the WrestleCon show uh, uh, one year, uh, and I remember some of the matches got like changed and stuff like that. Um, I remember I like, it was a weird mix of like, I went specifically to see, uh, Kevin Steen versus Masato Tanaka Oof. because I, I, I knew that was going to be really special. Uh, and then the other match was like Jeff Jarrett against, uh, Colt Cabana. <laughs> and then the main event was a, like a CZW match, like, uh, with like Masada and DJ high, which it was like the weirdest thing you could pick to like main event. But, um, yeah, it was interesting. Um, but uh, I know that uh, this year they're doing a – they're going to have at WrestleCon a 10-man tag with teams captained by Joey Ryan and Jeff Jarrett, and they're not revealing yet any of the other participants. But if you look at some of the names that are at WrestleCon – Yeah. And like Rey Mysterio is at WrestleCon and um, – geez, I'm, now I'm suddenly blank in it, but it, the, the possibilities are virtually endless for that kind of a match. It yeah. could go – in any number of directions. Definitely. Awesome. Well, I, I have a feeling that around the Indies is going to be like uh, three times as long <laughs> next week when you God get around to that call. Help us. Uh, yeah, yeah, and plus he'll be recovering from WrestleMania, so that'll be a fantastic. Wow. Uh, it is uh, wrestling overload this weekend, uh, no matter what level of fan you are, I think, and uh, I think it's going to be a pretty good one. Uh, so uh, it, it, let us know what you guys are watching out there. What are you looking forward to out of all the main shows, the side shows, uh, whatever the case may be, um, or, or if you're getting down there, especially what do you get to check out? Uh, so for our for our Texas friends that are hanging out down there, and Amon, I, Amon, I better get live tweets the entire say, or, weekend. I was say or a non-Texas friends, and if you're coming down for that weekend, then you're going to one of the shows I mentioned. Up, yeah, say hi. Totally. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm excited. I'm very excited. Um, I like I said, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to miss some of these indie shows this weekend. At the very least, you know the the, the you know stuff that was being put on. It's awesome. Well, <laughs> hey, Matt Carlin, thanks for uh, hanging out and giving us helping us get a preview of what to see WrestleMania weekend. 
Yeah, no problem, Sorg. And uh, look for this uh, 15 must-see matches column. We'll try to get this dropped for everybody. Uh, hopefully by the time you're listening to this uh, fine podcast. So go over to WrestlingMayhemShow.com and check it out. And uh, tell us, tell me what an idiot I am because I left out some match that you love. It's okay. <laughs> there you go. And thanks, I understand. Sh- Shane, in your face. On yes, the Twitters sir. and everywhere else. Uh, thank you for sticking around with us. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. There you go. Uh, Amen at Amen 2, please. Look for him. High five him if you see him at any of those shows here at WrestleMania weekend. Absolutely. Uh, also, go check out uh, the company I'm involved with, which is Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, this, I think, a couple of days ago, we just released our latest event on Smartmark Video that you can go uh, order. Uh, and we also released a free match from that event on our YouTube channel youtube.com slash inspire pro video so if you want a taste of what we're uh, dishing out uh you can go check us out there and, and, and check it if you dig that we did have an interview last week with the video yep. the current videographer for for you guys down there at inspire pro ray zombie uh and mm-hmm. check out his stuff as well great stories last week about his uh adventures in japan and finding <laughs> the, the secret ddt bar uh out there it was it was it was pretty cool to to catch up with him Uh, he's doing some cool stuff down there uh your way there amen so and check out everything wrestling mayhem show.com check out our friends iwc wrestling.com and check out shane and our friends over there indie wrestling.us new releases from our friends at renegade wrestling alliance as well as the last couple shows from iwc and 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 a lot more Uh, there's gonna be a lot of actually historical uh prime wrestling with a lot of names that we dropped here uh tonight friends of the show guys in nxt um as they were kind of cutting their teeth up in cleveland Cleveland uh, will be uh, releasing here hopefully in the next couple of weeks. I know you can get those DVDs if you find Joe Dombrowski's booth uh, out there in uh, WrestleCon and, and the weekend uh, down there in Dallas. Uh, so uh, from that, hey, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, great crew tonight. Great discussion. Uh, we'll see you guys at the indie wrestling shows and 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 and, and, and find some time WrestleMania weekend to support some indie wrestling. Oh. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.